Today I'm going to explain the movie Code 8, released in the year 2019. The movie begins with the news of humans with super abilities. No one knows why these people have these super abilities. As everyone now knows about this, the government comes out with a law for all the people with super abilities must register themselves with the government. They call these people powers. These people with super abilities are used by the government to build Lincoln City as the city of tomorrow. The Industrial Revolution proves to be very helpful for industries, but it has its downfall. Hundreds of powers are now out of demand and machines can now do what they were used to. The powers are running out of jobs now, and the way of crime is the only way for some of them to earn enough to survive. There's a new drug out on the streets, which is highly effective, and people are getting really addicted to it. The drug is called Psych. The drug is produced by superhuman spinal fluid and is now spreading fast in the city. Connor Reed drives his truck to a residential construction site. He's coming from a job interview and pulls his tie off and changes his shirt. He gets out of the truck, goes to the foreman at the site, and asks him for work to do. He is just an hour late, but the foreman agrees to give him half a day's salary. Most of the people working on the construction site have superhuman abilities, and are assigned to do work accordingly. A drone flies towards the construction site, and the police also come. The police call every workers to show their identity. Connor sees the police as he's fixing some electric wires with his bare hands. Connor has no effect on the electricity, as he has electric abilities. The two policemen line the workers outside the house, and they're asked to look towards the drone, which flies above them. The drone scans their faces and numbers them all. A policeman tells the workers to go home, and if they really need to work, they should get their working permits. As the drone scans everyone, one of the men has a warrant against his name, and he's immediately arrested by the police. As a policeman escorts the man towards the police car, the man uses his fire powers to hit the policeman and he starts to run. As he's running, two robotic soldiers, known as the Guardians, drop down from the drone and shoot the running man down. The next scene takes us to another part of the city, where the police are raiding a psych farm and making the news. The police also released a video of them burning the drug, giving a message to the criminals that the more the drug is made, the police are ready to burn it down. Meanwhile, Connor walks into a grocery store where his mom works. His mom is being schooled by her boss, as she picks up pieces of glass from a broken sauce jar. Connor walks up to his mom, and she tells him to go wait outside for her. Her boss makes a rude comment, which makes Connor angry, and as he's about to give him a taste of his own medicine, his mother stops him. His eyes get really blue with anger. The next day, Connor sits with other workers on a sidewalk, hoping to get some work. A red van shows up, and one of the workers tells Connor that this van belongs to a very famous psych drug dealer's crew. The van stops in front of them, and the driver talks to the workers, but everyone ignores him. As he's about to leave, Connor stands up and walks towards the van. Connor asks for 200 in advance, and the driver agrees. The woman sitting next to the driver makes fun of him, as if he's not even standing there. Next, we can see Connor is trying to open a gate with a high-voltage current flowing in it. After receiving an electric shock, he drops the tool and grabs the gate. He then manages to stop the current flow in the gate, and the driver and the woman are happily shocked to see this. The woman then uses her super ability to melt the iron chain, which is holding the door closed. There's a mute guy with them as well, and as Connor tries to pick up a heavy drum filled with chemicals, he sees that the mute guy is picking up the drum like it's a piece of cake. As they're stealing the chemical-filled drums, a guard comes and tries to stop them. The driver has the telekinetic ability, and he uses it to easily grab the guard's radio, as he stands shocked. The mute then crushes the radio in his hands, and the guard is unable to stop them. As they leave the site, they stop the van and peel off the red sticker, and the van is actually white. They drive the van to their base, which is an underground club. At the club, Marcus Sutcliffe uses his super ability to see a different way that his throat is going to be slit. In front of him is sitting a man who is threatening to pay him back his money. The man tells him that he has just one week to pay him, or he'll slit his throat just as he saw in his visions. The next day, Connor is again sitting with the other worker on the sidewalk, hoping to get work. The foreman from Connor's last construction job comes in a truck and announces the skills that he needs for the day. As Connor looks to the other side, he sees the drug dealer's crew also pulling up in a car looking for people to work. Connor chooses the crew over the foreman and goes to them. They take him to an old building. 
The driver's name is Garrett, and he uses his ability to levitate some light bulbs, and Connor uses his ability to light them up. Garrett is actually preparing Connor for their next job. Garrett tells him about the next job, and tells him that the abilities Connor has can be really useful for them. Finally, it is the day for their next job, and they go to rob a bank. As they get inside the bank, Garrett points his gun toward the bank teller, and Connor uses his electric ability to open up the vaults. Connor is able to short the electricity, and they then force the teller to open the vaults. As they get in the vault, they notice that there's very less cash inside it, and the teller then tells them that the vault was cleared just hours ago before they came in. They grab all that they can and run out from the back door. As they're leaving the bank, a drone approaches them and tries to stop them. Before the drone can release the guardians, Connor fries them with electricity. Back at the club, Marcus is going crazy as they were unable to get the money and he has to pay his debts. He's left with very less time now. Connor tries to warn Marcus, but a woman shoots at Marcus, nearly missing him. Marcus's bodyguard comes in front of him to save him from the bullets. As the woman is about to shoot another woman called Nia, sitting next to Marcus, Connor uses his ability to disarm her. Meanwhile, Marcus's bodyguard gets up again and shoots the woman. Then he pulls the bullets off his chest. The bodyguard has this ability, and he's well, as if nothing has happened to him. Connor then goes to Nia in a back room, curious as to why the woman made her a target. Connor is also hurt, as he had a wound on his arm from a knife that the attacker had. Nia asks Connor to uncover the wound, and she then puts her hand on the wound and heals it. She then tells him that she's in Marcus's debt. As Connor goes home, he finds his mother sitting in the kitchen, and she's really angry. She accuses him of what he had been doing, and they both get into an argument. Everything was out on the news. His mother's hand starts to get frostbite, and the glass of water in her hand freezes, resulting in her fainting. Connor takes her to the hospital, and now Connor needs money to pay the hospital for his mother's treatment. After the hospital, Connor is picked up by cops, and he's now sitting face to face with two police officers. The officers try to get information out of him about the drug dealer Marcus. One of the officers even tries to push his limits, but Connor remains quiet. The cops have to let Connor go, as they have nothing against him, but Connor learns about the cops' plan regarding Marcus. Garrett then takes Connor to meet Marcus, and they make a deal with him. Connor includes Nia, the healer, in the deal. She's now a part of the deal, and if Connor and Garrett are able to complete the deal, they will get Nia. They shake hands, and the deal is finalized. Garrett then briefs them about their plan for the next job, and they all get ready for the job. She can see that there are drones looking out for the armored truck, which contains millions of dollars worth of psych drugs. The entire crew for the job is ready and on the lookout as Connor gets ready to fry the armored truck. Garrett uses his ability to block the road with a truck, and Connor takes his time to charge up enough to be effective for the job. The cops deploy the guardians to protect the armored truck. Garrett gets out of the truck, and as the cops are about to arrest him, Connor appears and fries the guardians. Connor and Garrett use all their power to make the mission successful. The cops inside the truck call for backup. The woman from their crew puts a hole in the van by burning it, and the mute throws a smoke grenade inside the truck. The cops inside the truck are forced to get out because of the smoke, and Marcus's men hold them at gunpoint. Marcus's bodyguard takes the suitcase from the cops and goes away. Garrett is shocked to see this, as he now knows that Marcus has betrayed them, and now they also will be killed by his men. Marcus's men kill the cops, and the bodyguard also kills the female crew member before Garrett can inform her. Garrett saves the mute from getting shot as he uses his ability to pull him to take cover behind a car. The gunmen then start to fire at Garrett, Connor, and the mute, but they run away as another drone comes and deploys the guardians, who kill the gunmen. Connor blames Garrett for all that has happened. They've lost two crew members now, and Marcus has also betrayed them. The mute was also shot and died on his way back with them. After hearing the accusation from Connor, Garrett remains quiet. Connor tells Garrett that he really is greedy, and he walks away from him. On the other hand, the cops who earlier brought Connor into custody are also accusing each other of what had happened in front of their chief. But now the drugs are back on the market, and they might be able to track Marcus down. Connor goes to visit his mother in the hospital. He holds her hand and sits next to her as she gets up. Connor cries in front of her and promises that he will make everything better again. His mother tells him that he has to let her go, and he has to get straight in his life. Officer Alex is in the park along with his daughter, who is holding cotton candy as they both walk. 
His daughter asks him about his special case, and as he's about to answer her, a man runs up to him and gives him a piece of paper before going away. This man is the same worker who used to sit with Connor on the sidewalk while they were hoping to get work. Officer Alex looks at the piece of paper and goes to dinner. There, he sees Connor and sits right next to him. Connor tells him that he will get him to Marcus on one condition. He wants to do whatever it takes to save his mom before he turns himself over to the police. Officer Alex, along with his task force, goes to capture Marcus. They raid the building with the underground club, and they send guardians inside the club. After knowing that cops are here to catch him, Marcus decides to run with the healer, the drugs, and his bodyguard. They're stopped by Garrett as they're about to escape. He shoots Marcus, and Marcus falls to the ground. He then shoots the bodyguard, but he is not affected by the bullets much. Connor then appears, and Garrett uses their ability to get rid of the bodyguard for good. Marcus points a gun toward Nia and tells her to fix him, but then Garrett comes and uses his ability to choke Marcus without even touching him. Connor then walks up to Nia and begs her to heal his mother. Nia refuses and shows him her arm. The wound that Connor previously had was shifted on Nia's arm as she healed him. Connor now knows that Nia can absorb the suffering of the person she tries to heal. Garrett tells Connor something, and he then points a gun toward Nia and takes her to the hospital where his mother is kept. They enter the room, and Connor forces Nia to heal his mother. As Nia is healing his mother, Connor has had enough, and he stops her. This is not how he was raised by his mother, and he actually has a pure heart. He drops Nia at her home, and his mother dies. Next, we can see Connor visiting his mother's grave, as Nia is visiting an old man in jail. The officers involved in busting the psych operation get recognized and are appreciated by the entire city. They are given the status of heroes by their chief in a press conference. The authorities place a ban on anyone using any superhuman ability. Garrett gives the drugs to the man who was seen threatening Marcus in the beginning. He then deals in business with him. Now, no one knows when Code 8, the code used for arresting powered humans, will be used again, as no one is allowed to use their power anymore. The movie ends here. Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on the notification and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.